So situation normal, everything must change. Um, before I start, a couple of words of warning. Uh, I happen to, uh, well, I'm going to be talking about everything, and I mean literally everything, cloud computing, big data, uh, the economic cycles of change, and I've got a relatively short amount of time to do this, and I happen to like kitten pictures, so I'm going to have to go really, really fast, I'm afraid. Um, and I'm also a scientist by training, um, which means I like graphs. Uh, that, that's, that's good for me, bad for you. Um, I started off with a graph. This is the level of audience pain. That's you against the number of slides given in a 45-minute presentation. Uh, I reckon there's a safe limit of about 30, uh, so I'll be using no less than 292. Um, I know what you're, you're thinking, uh, but don't worry about it. There'll be plenty of signposts along the way. So I'm going to talk about change. I'm going to talk about the consequences of change, uh, how organizations are impacted by this, and also about strategy. Um, I'm going to start off with a graph. Uh, this is a graph of the diffusion of innovation, how things spread in society, uh, produced by a chap called Everett Rogers, uh, from early adopters to, to laggards. Uh, it was made famous by Jeffrey Moore in his book, Crossing the Chasm. Um, now, everything diffuses. Uh, so electricity, the Parthian battery, uh, 300, 400 AD, diffused. Uh, utility provision of electricity, that diffused. Uh, but the question is, how do things evolve? How did electricity go from a battery to utility provision? So about 2005, I did a piece of research which looked at about 6,000 different activities and plotted ubiquity, how widespread something was, against certainty, how well understood and well defined it was. And what this showed was you had the genesis of something new, uh, then custom-built examples, then products, then rental services, then it became more of a commodity, and then you had utility services. And this is the process of how things evolve. So if we take our Parthian battery, uh, then we had Wollaston, custom-built systems for electricity generation, the Hippolyte Pixie, the first sort of products. Uh, then we had Siemens, the first generators, and eventually um, Westinghouse, and then Edison, AC utility provision. Uh, computing infrastructure, the first computer, Z3, uh, custom-built systems like Leo, uh, the first products, IBM 650, rental services like Timshare, uh, then commodity hardware, and today we're talking about cloud, utility service provision. So um, there's a process of diffusion, and there's also a process of evolution. Now, correlation, causation uh, are two different things, and so we've got cor correlation, but why do things evolve? We'll ask any businessman, and they will tell you that business is little more than warfare. It's a cat fight. And any time anyone gains some sort of technological advantage, some new big gun, uh, like an e-commerce site, everyone else wants to follow suit. And so there is a constant pressure, uh, user competition, which, which makes things more widespread. But equally, there's competition to supply the stuff. And any time anybody introduces a new concept, like kit and body armor, someone will make a better version. So what you have is supply competition. It's those two forces of user and supply competition which drive the process of evolution. Uh, we call it commoditization, uh, from genesis all the way to utility provision. Now, I'm going to take that evolution curve and lie it across the bottom. And so these are the different areas. We've got genesis on this side, commodity, utility on this side. I'm going to talk a little bit about big data, so we can talk about something like Hadoop. Of course, systems like Hadoop have a past. So there was a point where we started to see big data type systems. And big data type systems aren't on one thing, they're built on other things. So they're built on things like infrastructure, which is more of a commodity, and a commodity which is, happens to be built on things like electricity provision. Now this actually is what we call a value chain. It's a combination of different components which provide some benefit at the end. And all of this stuff has a past. So infrastructure today is more utility. Uh, it's been commodity for a bit of time. But in the past, it was the genesis, something brand new, the Z3 computer. And if you trace it all the way back, just that particular value chain, you start off with, say, the Parthian battery. As electricity provision spread, became more of a utility, became more efficient, it enabled higher order systems to appear. 
So it enabled things like teletyping, radio, computing. And this is an effect known as componentization. So if I think of something like the nut and bolt, first nuts and bolts, Archimedes screw, I suppose, um, they were standardized by the introduction of uh, Maudsley screw cutting lathes. And suddenly we had a change. We went from one nut fitted one bolt to interchangeable nuts and bolts and companies producing standard nuts and bolts. And that caused an explosion of higher order systems such as machinery. And that always happens. When something commoditizes, you see increasing rates of agility and growth of higher order systems, which they themselves then commoditize and create higher order systems. And there's another effect that goes on here. Everything which commoditize becomes past worth. And these new higher order systems are the new sources of worth. And this is an effect known as uh, creative destruction by Joseph Schumpeter. So what we have is commoditization increases efficiency, increases agility of higher order system, creates new sources of worth. So we go back to our value chain. It's the fact that stuff is provided as a commodity, highly efficient, enables us to do things like big data. Now, IT is a mass of different activities, all of which are evolving, and this is why we always feel we're on a hamster wheel. Things are commoditizing. We have to keep up, because otherwise our competitors gain all those benefits. And so the whole process feels like a cycle. Things commoditize, enable higher order systems that commoditize, enable higher order systems that commoditize. Now, it's not just activities, things we do that commoditize, but practices, how we do things. So if I go back to computing infrastructure, when computing infrastructure was a product, we developed novel architectural practices, things like for scaling, scale up, for resilience, M plus one. And they spread, and they were based upon better hardware and became best practice for the world of products. But as the world of products as in computing infrastructure as a product evolved to more utility services, novel practices evolved. So rather than scale up, we scaled out distributed systems. Rather than M plus one, it was designed for failure. These are be based on better software. And they have spread and become best practice for that utility world. Now that creates us a problem. And that problem is if we've built lots of applications on the old practice, i.e. we have lots of legacy, there is a cost associated with changing to this new world. And we don't like it. So what we often do is we take the legacy and we stick it on the new world. And Amazon, say, has an outage. And people run around screaming, the end of cloud is nigh. To which the answer is, shouldn't our architecture evolve as well? To which the response is normally fairly <laughs> negative. Um, the point is, it's always our past success, our, our, uh, our legacy, which creates inertia to this cycle of change. And vendors have inertia as well because of their past success. So they're used to selling you products for a million pounds. They don't want to sell you products on a credit card. They want you to buy the thing for a million pounds. Um, and that inertia can build up in both the culture in terms of the rewards and the markets around those companies. So I'm going to quickly recap. There is a process of diff diffusion, but there's a separate process of evolution. That process of evolution is how we go from genesis all the way up to utility provision. It's driven by competition, both user and supply competition. You can't stop it unless you stop everybody competing. Now, when we look at things within business, we have value chains. And those value chains consist of a number of different components, all of which are evolving. Now, the evolution of one component enables higher order systems to appear, and they evolve, enable higher order systems to appear. So what we have is a cycle of continuous change. And it's not just practice activities that evolve, but practices as well. And that creates a problem, because as activities evolve, practices can co-evolve. And so what we can end up with is legacy estates which aren't suited to this new world and which involves a cost, and we don't like costs, so that creates inertia to the change. 